Hi everyone, good morning. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Well, today I'm gonna to take you along for a Snapdragon harvest, and then we're gonna set up the stand with some wrap bouquets. There's a garden tour coming through our area today and tomorrow, and I think I wanna try wrap bouquets again because I feel like there's gonna be a lot more foot traffic than there is car traffic. But I really wanted to take you along for the Snapdragon harvest because we start, oh my goodness, look at, oh my goodness, look at this woodpecker. Can you see it there in the lilac? Well, we've really just been lucking out on seeing so many birds as we harvest together the last few videos. And speaking of that, I think I'm gonna have a really hard time harvesting much more of this larkspur because the hummingbird is all over it. I don't even know if I'm gonna harvest any of this larkspur for the dried flower Christmas tree because she's just all over it all throughout the entire day. And I would hate to take away a nectar source that she's really in need of. So I think we're just gonna sacrifice the larkspur harvest this year to my hummingbird friend. And there's plenty more flowers to enjoy on the dried flower Christmas tree. But we do have quite a lot to get done today. It's actually the morning now, and then we're setting up in the evening, which is a little bit different than normal. But let me go get Grace, a bucket, my snips, which I still haven't found my third pair of snips, but I think they might be in the compost pile. Thanks for that comment, because I think you're probably right. I was probably harvesting irises and threw them in the compost pile. But for now, we'll grab my second pair of snips and get to work. pink snapdragons harvested and I just came through in here with my hoe and weeded the area and then gave it a nice watering and we lucked out with our timing here because these rocket white snapdragons are ready for harvest so I'll have to get to that this evening hopefully all these bouquets will sell and I'll be able to set up with all fresh cuts tomorrow before we head inside, I wanted to show you something really cool, and I learned this from my mom last year. She took some cuttings of Mahogany Splendor Hibiscus and rooted them. So I took some cuttings only a week ago, and look at this. I took kind of your classic cutting where you cut right under the node, and that's how that looks. But I also took a leaf cutting, so that's just a single leaf on its stem there and check that out. <laughs> and then I posted this on Instagram and someone here in our community said what they like to do is just take a cutting on a nice cool wet day, stick it directly in the ground and that works well also, which is how I like to root my um, Mexican bush sage. So thanks so much for that great information. So if you need a little bit more mahogany splendor hibiscus, maybe give some cuttings a try. They rooted in just one week, fabulous. So here's my very unprofessional way of propagating these salvias. Just go ahead and snap it right below a node. Then I'm gonna remove all these lower leaves. So I have a cutting that looks like this. It's only gonna be 70 degrees today, shockingly. So now I'm just gonna stick it directly in the ground where I want it. I don't have my shovel out with me, obviously. <laughs> so I'll just loosen up the soil there a bit. Take my cutting. Stick it in the ground. Arm it back up with soil. Now I'll just water it in. It's a nice, cool, overcast day, so it's gonna be absolutely fine just like that. And in no time at all, it will have developed roots and it'll be a brand new Mexican bush sage plant for us. Sometimes I'll also take cuttings and root them inside, but I found that since they just root so quickly and easily out here in the garden, why not just kind of skip a step and do it that way, right? 
All right, now let's get to some bouquet making. So for these bouquets in particular that are going to the flower stand, I really want the wrapping to be pretty far down on the bouquet. That way when people drive by, they're still able to see all the beautiful flowers. Sometimes if I do a gift bouquet and I'm really wrapping it more extravagantly, I'll put the wrapping up much higher. But for these, it's more about saying, oh here, you can either just grab these and go, you can take the jar if you like. They look a little bit more like a gift Maybe, I don't know. But um, this is the way I go about wrapping them for the flower stand. And I think I have a video on wrapping them for kind of a more elaborate design that you might do for something like, um, like a dance recital I did the other day. So let me get these over here ready to go outside and then I will wrap one with you. And another thing that I always do with everything when it comes to the small scale, small scale flower farming endeavor is always just try to use what I have and save money wherever I can. So I'm always talking about how I have uh, tissue paper and really large quantities from my main job. So same thing, instead of using craft paper, just use tissue paper. And that is a little bit different too because tissue comes as a rectangle rather than a square like a lot of the craft paper does. So let me get you a close up on this. So for these, I just use one piece of tissue and here it is long ways. This line is just the way that it's delivered to me from Uline. So rather what I wanna do is go like this. There's some leaves left over from earlier. Now I wanna make another fold. I wanna fold this up. I'm folding it up, I would say about three inches just because I don't want a whole bunch of tissue under the water line. Then I'm gonna fold these over, cause it's just a little bit big, being the rectangle tissue that it is. Fold this one over. And that's pretty much how I want it to look. Now I'll grab my bouquet, and I'm gonna lay it up pretty high, because like I said, I want really the flowers to be featured. And now, get my stapler. I'm gonna take this side over, the right side over to the center, take the left side to meet the right. I'll just grab my stapler here, put a staple in the middle, hopefully y'all can see this. And there it is. Stick that in my jar here, just an old soft jar like always. And there you have it, a wrapped bouquet where the wrapping is not gonna get wet and my customer here has what I hope to be a nice choice. You can take the jar, you can leave it, it's up to you. Whatever you wanna do is great with me. So now all that's left to do is get these all in my carrier, set up the stand, and let's see if the wrapping helps them sell, if it doesn't help them sell. And the flowers that we have in this Saturday's arrangements are the beautiful Legend Light Pink Snapdragon. We have some lovely Colorado Yarrow. I have a big patch of this over in the driveway garden. We have Orlea. Bupleurum is the only foliage that I'm using in today's arrangements. And some of the arrangements have the Black Boy Bachelor's buttons and a little bit of Nigella tucked in. And then we also have the Bridal Pink Snapdragon as well. And it'll be interesting too to see how these sell because normally these would also have some Pro Cut Plum Sunflowers in them, but I'm choosing not to cut my first succession of Pro Cuts because they're kind of hiding some construction that's going on. So our first cut of sunflowers are going to be my Cherry Rose Sunflowers, which are back in the $5 garden. And they should be ready by next week. So now that we're all set up, let me walk you through the backyard and show you how all my sunflower successions are doing. At this point, I'm on succession number seven, and I'm kind of on to those nice rusty tones, but I can show you the first two are in bloom and lots more to look forward to. So here on the right side of the border is where I have my first succession that was planted out on March 31st, and these are the Pro Cut Plum. Here in the $5 garden, we have succession number two, and these are supposed to be cherry rose sunflowers, which are branching sunflowers, but I'm wondering, okay, I do see a little bit of branching there. I was concerned I had made a mistake and that I had done Pro Cut Plum back here also, but I guess that cherry rose just looks really similar to Pro Cut Plum. This is the first year I've ever grown the cherry rose variety. 
And you can see we have some zinnias coming on back here. And this area is just gonna be so wonderful when it's in full bloom. But so this is succession number two, two weeks after the Pro Cup Plum. Succession number two is halfway back in the $5 garden and the other half of it is over here in the driveway garden. If you can see it back behind the lilies, same thing, that beautiful cherry rose sunflower. Here's sunflower succession number three. This is sunflower Steve's Van Gogh mix and they're getting close here. A few of them were also damaged by the four line plant bug. So we'll see how that works out. Some of them are getting really close. And so this will be so exciting to see this succession open up. And I also have a little bit of the third sunflower succession on both sides of the entrance to the garden, because I thought it might be nice to have his sunflowers just kind of peeking over the fence here. They were hit pretty early on with the four line plant bug, but they've recuperated just fine. And I really hope it works out to where they get tall enough to just peek their beautiful heads right over the fence line. So this isn't a sunflower, of course, but I just had to show you guys this gorgeous mother of pearl poppy. This poppy mix is so beautiful, even though most of them are kind of this pure white. Some of them do have a bit of pink in them, like this one. Isn't that gorgeous? So I just want to give you guys a quick update on that. Okay, back to the sunflowers. So succession number four should also be back here in a raised bed. I did show it in a video once, but I had some double quick flats back here and I left them back here overnight and all the tops got eaten. So unfortunately succession four doesn't really exist. So let's move on to succession five. Succession number five is located all throughout the driveway garden and also in my front yard garden. The ones in the driveway garden are getting hit by some kind of a bug. It looks like a tolerable amount of damage so far, so I'll just keep a close eye on that. And this is also sunflower Steve seeds. Well, friends, I'm going to wrap up today's video here just because I need to get inside and make dinner for everybody. Thanks so much for watching this video. I'll let you know how the flowers did wrapped at the stand sometime soon. I want to wish you a great day and happy gardening. Bye.